The next thing that we need to do is to be able to draw up the interior walls. Now this is often not as easy as we'd hope because often things aren't quite straight and we can't dimension things very well when we're on size and the rest of it. So we might take measurements but there's always a little bit of fiddling that happens. Now the great thing is we can drag and drop these files into Archicad. How do we do that? We can open up the folder, a folder, and this is a multi-page PDF and I want to use page 2 so I'm going to drag and drop this whole, fold, this whole file, multi-page PDF, and I will choose page 2 and press place. Once I've pressed place, it may or may not bring it into scale. What do I mean by that? It depends on how big it was when it was, in this case, scanned. Or if it was created straight out of CAD, what scale it was at when it was created as a PDF as a vector PDF. This is not a vector-based PDF, this is a rastered PDF. What I mean by that, it's pixels. So if I zoom, 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 we see it gets very, very pixelated. That's what um, a photocopy does, of course. This is based on a hand drawing of something that was originally created in CAD, printed out, so yeah, it gets complicated. But we're never going to get it perfectly to scale, but what we can do is get it roughly to scale. So if we're not sure, the best thing to do is to find a measurement measure across and see if it roughly works out. So if I get my line and measure across this room, we see that this room should be roughly 7445 in size. If it's not, then I need to resize it. So let's choose the biggest measurement. So we'll use this one here, 9275. That's a bit longer. Now how do we resize? Edit, reshape, resize. And I want to use this off called define graphically. That means that these numbers are greyed out so I can't type in a number and that's good because I don't know what percentage I would need to resize at. So I define graphically, press OK. If you're not sure what to do with any command, down the bottom left hand side of our window it gives us a prompt. So it's saying enter resizing center point. What does it mean by that? Which point do I want to resize from? Which point remains the same? In this case, just choosing one of the walls is the smartest way to do that. So I'm going to choose one of these walls. Enter first vector of resize ratio. What does that mean? Define where it's currently at. Click. Enter second vector of resize ratio. What does that mean? Define what we want it to be. So we would say define graphically. So if I zoom out, we can see that I'm manually changing the size of this. Now, that's not really easy and I don't want to keep moving my cursor until I get the right number. That's crazy. So what I can do is actually type in the number. So type in the number of what I want it to be, 9275. So I've defined graphically the point of where I want it to center from. I've defined graphically the existing size and now I've resized using a number to tell it how big I want it to be. So that's all of the bits. Let's now get rid of this one, so I'll delete that old one and we'll put the new one in. Now I want to find a reference point, so I'm going to place it over my upper ground floor, so I'll show my upper ground floor as my trace reference, show as trace reference, and I'll find a point of reference, so I'll go drag, find a point, What what's a good point to use? Let's base it on the internal face of that corner, top right corner, click. Now let's flip this and see if it's working. It looks like it's far too big so that's a, an interesting way to start. We can start to determine if we've got problems with how we've resized it. How do I do this? If we click on the trace reference option, click switch reference with active. Now what I've done is I've placed this drawing in a worksheet. The worksheets are a really good place to place anything two-dimensional that we want to use as a reference but we don't necessarily want it to be the same thing. So we see here that I've placed this but we have a big issue. The drawing that we were basing it from was very, very wrong. So while the numbers are useful and we're going to use those numbers, it was not accurate in the way that the original drawing was created. Hopefully the numbers are correct, but the drawing itself was wrong. We see that this house has a single step and the drawing that it was based from had a double step. So it was inaccurate to begin with, and that will happen sometimes. So we can start to draw in these numbers. 
I'm going to cheat now for you. I just wanted to show you that process, but I'll show you one that I created earlier. So we'll use our existing floor plan, chose trace reference, and we can see I've already created this properly. Now I'm going to dimension this one just like the other plan. So it looks the same, um, but in this case we know that the lines will be true, so I'm not heading you down a direction that's wrong. All right, so that's enough points. We'll go back to our upper ground floor. And now I just want you to use these numbers. I'll just explain it. <clears throat> now I'll, I'm going to, again, do this a little bit differently. I, of course, I could just draw it because I can see that, but I'm going to try to understand where to work from. Whenever we've got internal corners, we could assume that the internal wall should line up with that. So if I go to my wall tool, go into the settings, we want to change this one to a 95 millimeter wall. And again, we're going to stick with the basic settings of walls for now rather than the composites. We'll change that later. We see that this wall is 95 millimeters thick. The outside wall, not this one, the outside one here is 115. This one here is 95. We want to align this. We see again that this is slightly different. So I'm going to base it on my current condition, not what I've currently got, what, not what I'm seeing. And I'm going to move across, hold shift to keep it straight. And when I get to the other wall, click. Now when I take that wall across, I want to make sure it goes all the way to the outside which is called our reference line, so that they intersect nicely. If I don't go to that reference line here, that doesn't work. If I extend, that doesn't work. Now, sometimes it will snap well for me, so if I click here, it automatically figures it out. If I click here, it automatically figures it out. So sometimes I have a bit of give with walls and it figures out what I'm trying to do, it reference planes directly. Sometimes with other tools it does not work that way and you need to actually get that reference plane perfect for it to work. So that one was easy because I could very simply define that that one was supposed to join. We see that this one's not aligning, the reference plane's not working very well. Why is that happening? Because the reference point is different. We see that the reference point here is on the inside face and the reference point here is on the outside face. We can't do a lot about that in this instance. Uh, we'll come back and fix that later. Once we get into the details of what is the surface or what is the structure of these materials. So for now, we'll just trace what we see. So we see that the offset of this should be 3650. So I couldn't do this in a few ways. I can draw a line. R3650. And then once I've drawn that line, I can drag a copy, move, drag a copy, hold shift. So now I know that that line is, that wall is in the right place and then I can extend that wall along. So that was one way. I had to draw a line, which was again a construction line because I, then I deleted the line. What's another way that I could do that? Let's do it again without. So I can drag a copy of the wall straight away. So I can go drag a copy, but if I type in that number, 1825, what happens? It's 95 millimeters short, because I haven't done the math in my head. I had, I'd had i have to add up that number. I'd have to add up the 19, sorry, the 1825 plus the 95 if I wanted the reference plane to be on the correct side. Or what's another option? I could flip it. I don't really care at the moment where my reference plane is. In fact, it probably makes more sense that my reference plane is on the outside. It does matter later though. It matters later because it very much matters where my reference plane is for this little room here because this is a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And when we're doing composites in bathrooms, we have a different materiality on the inside to the outside face. So for the time being, what I could do is select this and go flip face. So I could say instead of in the outside face, I want that to be the inside face. That would work. Or I could say instead of having the reference plane on that side, I want you to put the reference plane on that side. So that's one way I could actually get that wall in the right place without having to move it. So that's one option. What's another option? I could do the same thing. I could drag a copy. Again, without doing it in my head. I could, I could of course, stop being lazy and actually work out the maths. But another, I'm just trying to show you different options at the moment. 1245. So I move it the right amount, and then I just, again, move drag, and this time I just move from outside edge to outside edge. 
So that's just clicking and dragging. So that's quite simple as well. And again, I can be lazy and I don't need to work out the maths. Um, what's other ways we can do this? We can use our guides. We can use our numbers. So if I know the distance between the internal of this is supposed to be 3170, I could change this to distance. 3170. I need to choose the right type of setting. What do I want it to be? Snap between nodes, snap between intersection points, or along entire elements. These all work in different ways. If I use this option, and then make sure I turn the trace reference off because otherwise it can snap to the trace reference as well, which is going to lead me astray. 3170 between elements. I want to use my wall. Hover, it now tells me where that is. And I got that exactly right in one go. So I can use my references, I can use my, <coughs> sorry, snaps. But there's a lot of work involved in that, so let's try that again. 2880. 2880. Again, I'll turn off my snap so I don't get confused. And again, that's going to work where I want. So there's multiple ways that we can work. They all work in slightly different ways. Um, I know that I don't want that one to end here, so I can trim. So I was using control or command to make that work. Delete that one, and then I need to extend these. I could extend it perfectly, wait till it gets me to my intersection point, then I know it's to the right place, or I could make it too far and then trim that back to be shorter if I wanted to. Again, both of those work. There's not all that much work involved in them. I have one more line to do. And of course, I'm, I've just been using numbers to explain it numerically, but of course if you had a reference guide like this, you'd be crazy not to just go drag a copy and line it up with the reference plane that you've got. So these are all different ways of working. Again, it's a good idea to turn off that trace reference just so we don't accidentally stretch it the wrong way. And toggle between being able to see things and not. See what happened there? It's in the wrong place because I had the trace reference on. So let's extend that. We need to split it this time. And then we'll drag that across. So now I've got all of my walls in place. I deliberately have not put the doors in because in ArchiCAD we add the walls and then we place doors and windows into them. So that's all of the walls in the right place based on the numbers that we've got using the numerical system defined by one internal point. I didn't have to work out the internal size of this room because I knew that the corner should align there. So what I want you to do now is to just use these dimensions that I've provided or use your own trace reference so then drag and drop your own trace reference into ArchiCAD and trace based on the measurements that you took on site or use these numbers hopefully you get the same result um, and if you get a differing result uh, I'd suggest maybe just use these ones so that way we've got a consistent even if inaccurate set out